Hello. Um, thank you for the opportunity to presenting my research. And as, as you mentioned, I'm a PhD student from the University of Melbourne, I'm from the Center for Eye Research Australia, and I'm also going to talk about the retina. Um, so the aim of my PhD is using cellular reprogramming to regenerate the retina and to treat vision loss. So let's begin. Um, I'm also going to ask you a question. Um, I want you to think about how would you feel if you had to face your everyday life with your vision looking like this or in complete blindness? Seems impossible, right? Unfortunately, this is what people living with photoreceptor uh, degeneration have to face every day. Photoreceptors are cells that are key um, for our vision. Um, they are located at the back of the retina and they are responsible for detecting the signals that are in the light and that our brain needs to form the images that we see as vision. So that's why um, when we have diseases that damage the photoreceptors, uh, it has a profound impact in the quality of our vision and it can often, often lead into blindness. We have two types of photoreceptors, um, rods um, that regulate the vision during night or in dark conditions, and cones um, that regulate vision during daylight and the detection of color. So I am particularly interested in cones because that is the type of vision that we use most of the time. In fact, that is the, the type of vision that we're using at the moment to look at all these amusing presentations, well, not amusing, but entertaining presentations. So as, as I said, um, when we have a disease that affects the photoreceptors, it can often, um, well, it results in visual impairment and it can develop into blindness. And blindness is a, it's a huge uh, global problem because it creates um, profound impact in the quality of life of a patient and it also has a huge burden on our societies because it creates problems like um, isolation, psychological problems, um, not to mention the burden, the financial burden that it places on our health system. Um, the death of photoreceptors, it's a process that it's irreversible and in most cases um, there are no treatments to restore vision once the photoreceptors are dead. The current approaches um, to, tr uh, to treat these diseases is just to help the patients manage the disease um, or just prepare them to live a life with visual impairment or blindness, which is not ideal. Popular examples of diseases caused by photoreceptor death are age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, which affects almost 196 million of people in the world, and retinitis pigmentosa that affects 1.5 million worldwide. Luckily, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and novel technologies like gene therapies are a promising um, avenue to treat vision loss. In fact, um, there's a prominent example called Loxterna, uh, which is um, a gene therapy that uses viruses and that it has been approved in many parts of the world, including Australia. Loxterna treats a very specific type of retinitis pigmentosa, so unfortunately, it is only applicable to a very small percentage of patients living with, living with visual impairment. So that's why in my PhD, I want to develop a treatment that would be applicable for all patients living with um, visual impairment caused by photoreceptor death. It is based in a technology called cellular reprogramming that was awarded the Nobel Prize in the 2012. And when I first heard about this technology, I was uh, amazed because before we used to think that the identity of material cells was a definitive state and it couldn't be changed. But now we know that we can take cells of a patient, like let's say skin cells, and um, reprogram them to become other tissues like neurons, heart muscle, and even photoreceptors. But how do you reprogram a cell? The answer is in our DNA. So basically, 
all the information that we have, that we need to make all the tissues of our body, it's already in our DNA. And the difference is how the cells use this information. For instance, I am particularly interested in a cell type called Mueller glia that is in the retina, and I want to reprogram it into photoreceptors because they have more like a supportive role in the retina. They can also regenerate, so it doesn't matter if we lose uh, some of them uh, by transforming them into photoreceptors. And they have also been shown to have stem cell uh, activity in other organisms. So going back to myeloglia, a DNA, they have unlocked in, in their DNA the genes that they require to make myeloglia. But for instance, the genes that they need, um, that encode for the recipe to make fault receptors are locked. But with a novel technology that we use in our laboratory called CRISPR activation, we are, we are able to activate a specific genes whenever we want. So with this, we can unlock um, the genes that encode the recipe for making fault receptors, and then we can promote these cells to become uh, cone fault receptors. So with this approach, I want to develop a treatment that would stimulate myeloglia into becoming new cones in a degenerated retina uh, with a single injection with the aim of um, replenishing the, the lost photoreceptors and potentially treating vision loss. The main challenge of cellular reprogramming is knowing the genes that you need to make the cell that you want, in this case, photoreceptors. So I develop a tool in the laboratory that allows me to detect the reprogrammed myeloglia into cones because they turn red, as you can see here. I couple this tool with a potent technology called CRISPR activation screen that basically allows me to search uh, all the genes within the human DNA to predict possible candidates that could make photoreceptors. In my experiment, I detected 196 genes that could potentially make a uh, reprogrammed myeloglia into photoreceptors, and I selected a few of them because of, the, of their importance in cone photoreceptor development. Next, I tested different combinations of these genes um, to try to find some that would, uh, would be effective in reprogramming myeloglia into photoreceptors. And overall, I tested more than 100, 100 combinations, and I was indeed able to detect some, some combinations that could reprogram myeloglia into photoreceptors because they turned red, as I explained before with the tool that I developed. We were also very happy to see that our new cone photoreceptors were functional because they could respond to light, which is a key characteristic of the photoreceptors. Now that I knew um, which genes could potentially, or I could use to make cone photoreceptors, we proceeded to do some preclinical -clin pre studies on a rat model that has photoreceptor degeneration and visual impairment. So what we did was to put these um, this cone reprogramming genes into viruses, and we injected these viruses into the eye of the rats, and four weeks after, we analyzed the effect it had in, our, in their vision. So we were very happy to see that our treatment was able to induce uh, or promote uh, a functional improvement in these rats uh, for parameters that measure um, cone fo uh, photoreceptor activity or the activity of all the cells within the retina. And well, this is very exciting because it means that um, we, we're getting closer to uh, at someday developing a treatment that could improve uh, visual function after you lose the photoreceptors. Um, I would like to finish summarizing my talk because I know that these were a lot of, uh, of there was a lot of information. So, um, so the aim of my PhD was to develop a, a cellular reprogramming protocol that could allow you to generate uh, new human co uh, cone photoreceptors. And I also show you how the uh, viral delivery of these um, cone reprogramming genes improved the visual function in a rodent model that has photoreceptor degeneration. So. Um, Overall, our results provide an important preclinical evidence for using cell reprogramming as a gene therapy to treat photoreceptor loss. I would like to thank the members of my laboratory, um, the Cellular Reprogramming Unit, and of course all our collaborators, because without them this wouldn't be possible. Thank you.